Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome to my guide on the things you shouldn't do before the release of Iceborne on PC. I've made a number of these videos where we talk about the things you should do, and really what's interesting about this video is we're a bit further along on the consoles with Iceborne, so things we were still speculating on, we actually know more about today, and I can give you guys even better advice than when I made those other videos. I can give even more specific advice on what you should be doing, and especially what you should not be doing if you just started the base game, and or if you're on the PC and you're trying to get ready for Iceborne. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's number one on the list of things you shouldn't do when you're preparing to play Iceborne. Don't build every base game weapon thinking that it's going to be useful or upgradable in the Iceborne expansion. Right, so now we have the Defender weapons. The Defender weapons are really strong. They're very cheap, right? Just use those. Use the Defender weapons. And then if you're looking to get some weapons ready before you jump into Iceborne, probably I would go after Nergigante weapons, Raytheon weapons, maybe some Valhazak weapons, especially like for elemental damage setups, uh, the bow, the dual blades, and even some dragon bone weapons as well, which also are going to be relevant for like the dual blades and maybe the bow. The new defender weapons are really a game changer for the base game. It, it really allows players who just purchased Monster Hunter World base game to kind of zip through the storyline, because it's obvious Capcom wants you guys to be able to join us in Iceborne. So, all the hard work you would have to do in the past of trying to obtain powerful weapons to get through the story and feel powerful, you can just skip that step, craft those defender weapons, and you're pretty much good to go for most weapon classes. There might be an exception or two where you might not prefer that weapon, but even in those cases, they're still pretty solid. For example, I wasn't sure how I felt about the Defender Bow, the Defender Light Bow Gun, and the Defender Heavy Bow Gun. I, I don't think those are necessarily your strongest options, but they'll work if you really want to use them. Here's the second thing you shouldn't be doing. Don't farm Kulv Taroth. So Kulv Taroth, probably the only thing you should be thinking about with Kulv Taroth, she, you know, she's the rotating event quest, she's the siege event. The only thing you might do with Kulv Taroth is gather parts for Zenny. That's about all I can think of. And there's other ways to obtain Zenny, so even with that, you don't have to do it. Uh, at this point, we were all speculating whether or not Kulv Taroth's weapons would be upgradable or if they would be maybe re-rollable at the uh, Elder Melder, but it turned out there was no interaction between the Kulv Taroth weapons and the new siege that we have in Iceborne. See, we've just gotten that siege. If you, if you haven't had any spoilers, don't worry, there's a spoiler-free video. But yeah, there was no interaction between the new siege and the old siege, so I would say just don't touch Kulv Taroth. She's kind of a waste of time in this case. If Capcom decide to bring her back in some shape or form in Iceborne, you can always go backwards and replay her at that point. So I would focus on other things in the base game. The third thing you shouldn't do in Monster Hunter World base game is use your streamstones. Okay, so in base game, streamstones are used for augmentations. You can like unlock further upgrades for your armor. You can augment your weapons to have maybe like health regen, attack, affinity. Well, in the future, there's augmentations, they don't go away, but they don't use streamstones. Instead, after finishing an optional quest with the Elder Melder, you're able to take all of your streamstones and basically trade them in for decorations. So the more streamstones you have when Iceborne launches or when you get into Iceborne, the better it's going to be for you because you're going to re-roll those augmentation materials, the streamstones, in order to obtain some of those new giant decorations. There's a new decoration type in Iceborne, right? You're going to be able to re-roll to try and obtain some of those, and that's really important for becoming powerful fast in Iceborne. Number four on the list is very similar to number three. Number three is all about saving your streamstones for Iceborne. Well, number four is all about saving your decorations for Iceborne. Number four, do not re-roll your decorations. The reason for this is because, what am I talking about first of all with re-rolls? The Elder Melder has the ability to take your decorations that you don't need, as well as a bunch of research points, and then she re-rolls them and you have a chance to get a decoration that you do need, right? So you can do this in the base game, you want to save it for Iceborne. That's because when Iceborne comes out, like I said, there's a new decoration type, and you have a chance to get one of those as well. And those are so valuable and so hard to unlock the good ones when it comes to Iceborne. I've already played it for like, maybe, I don't know, 100, 200 hours, maybe more. And I have not unlocked all of the good giant decorations. So you'll want to save all of your extra decorations for re-rolling for the giant decorations in Iceborne, okay? Do not re-roll your decorations. Just wait till Iceborne comes out. Moving on to number five on the list, I recommend that you don't build any more armor than you need 
in the base game. So obviously you need to build some armor in order to get done with the story mode, right? And you can get the story mode done with pretty reasonable cheap armor. Don't go beyond that because, well, basically in Iceborne, all the old armor becomes completely obsolete. That's for two reasons. First of all, you have the new giant decoration slots, but second of all, the defense rating on the armor is so much better in Iceborne because the monsters deal a lot more damage. So it's important that you upgrade to the new Iceborne armor right away, even if you're using kind of like the low level armor in the Iceborne armor sets, okay? So even the low level Iceborne armor is better than the best base game armor. Does that make sense? Also, it's important to note that it's not like the base game armor gets upgraded. You know, you can't like take that old armor and then build on it. There's just an entire new level of materials and armor in Iceborne. So all your old armor becomes obsolete and you can probably throw it all away. I don't think there's any exceptions. I think one time I saw a speedrunner using some old gamma armor and he was using like maybe like a pair of Kushala arms or something like that. Very rare exceptions like that occur though. So you probably could just throw away most of your base set armor. Okay, well that was a list of things that you would want to avoid doing in the base game because it's a waste of your time. It's a perfect list if you're like me and you're a procrastinator. So it's like being told what not to do and you're like, yeah, that's chill. You just kind of lay back on your couch and you don't do those things. Well, let's talk about some of the things you do want to do while working your way through Iceborne or while waiting for uh, Iceborne to become available. Don't worry, I'm not going to get you a huge list of things you should do. This is going to be a nice compressed version of what you should get done. First of all, get all your charms. The reason why your charms are so good is because they're like decorations you can actually go craft. And the charms are really powerful in Iceborne. You've got like the handicraft charm is especially good. Earplugs charm is surprisingly useful. Uh, free element ammo up is useful. Get these charms done in the base game so that you don't have to do as much to upgrade them when Iceborne rolls around, right? All of the elemental attack charms are really good. Uh, there, I, I probably have a charms list somewhere of all the best charms to unlock. Uh, peak performance still gets used. Resentment's decent. Agitator's actually really good, so go after Agitator. Uh, what else? What else? Any others? Well, I can't think of any others off the top of my head. Why don't we move on to the other things on the list? Get your mantles unlocked. Okay, some of the mantles just unlock lock automatically if you did your optionals and if you did the story mode in the base game other mantles you kind of have to work for i do have a video that breaks down how to unlock all of the mantles i recommend taking a look at that video i'll leave a link to it in the comment section and in the description uh, also another thing you'll probably consider if you've got extra time is just go unlock all of your cat gear all of your palco gear and finally if you find yourself with spare time, besides the fact that you could do tempered investigations for decorations, the other thing you could do is focus on unlocking the layered armor if you just want something fun to do. Alright, and that concludes the list of things you don't want to do, as well as some tips on some things you do want to do. Do you guys want to talk about what to expect when you start the Iceborne expansion? Man, what should you be doing when you start the Iceborne expansion? Number one, you're gonna start the story right afterwards. So, you know, you finish the base game story and immediately the Iceborne story becomes available. So you're gonna start the story right away. The difficulty of the beginning of Iceborne is very manageable with your base game armor and your base game weapons. However, as the game progresses, you're going to want to grab some new armor because the ending of Iceborne becomes pretty challenging. I'd say it's fairly challenging, especially the first time. Pretty soon, I'm probably going to release a video that takes into account all 14 weapon classes, and I'm probably going to talk about story builds for all 14 weapon classes so that you can kind of choose a very cheap but very effective early game weapon, and, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about weapon progression as well, but it's actually kind of uncomplicated. I'll get to that in a minute. Number two, now that you've saved up all these stream stones and all these decorations, you've started Iceborne. As soon as you get those Elder Melder uh, optional quests out of the way, go ahead and re-roll for the giant decorations in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. The sooner you do those, the sooner you get the good decorations and you can put those into your new armor sets. This was something I didn't think to do when I played through Iceborne. And so I kind of played, you know, starving on decorations. Well, I should have done it sooner. I should have done it as soon as I can, in fact. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and run through all of them. Just get rid of everything you don't need, especially the streamstones. But with the decorations, be careful not to spend any decorations that you actually do want, right? Like some of the medium-sized decorations are still useful because the armor sets in Iceborne do allow for small and medium decoration slots. Some build tips for early games. See, some people get stuck in the early game because the monsters have new powerful ailments. They like to use elemental attacks. Well, with the ailments, one in particular, I think, 
kind of is like a wall for players, is the Viper Toby Kadashi. You'd be surprised if you're watching this, you're like, how could you get stuck on Viper Toby Kadashi? Well, his Venom actually really wrecks you if you're not used to having to actually deal with the poison. Poison damage in the base game was pretty easy. In in Monster Hunter Iceborne, it's now, what is it called? Is it called Venom? It does a ton of damage. So you better have poison heals with you for that, for that quest, or when you're putting your build together, just put in poison resistance decorations. You should have some. They're very, I mean, they, they're very common. So put in your poison resistance or your, uh, you know, whatever it is you need. Maybe you need blight resistance for some monsters. Maybe you need like thunder resistance for Fulgur Anjanath. Whatever the case is, build a little bit of defense into your set if you have those decorations. And be sure to bring the fortitude skill. When you die, you're going to come back stronger. That's if you're not playing with friends, of course. But even when you are playing with friends, maybe you're the guy who uses all the lives because you're that bad. It happens. Bring the Fortitude uh, decorations anyways, right? Uh, and other than that, you know, my favorite skills for defense are the Health Boost and the uh, Divine Protection. I have a vo whole video where I talk about the best defensive skills in the game. You're welcome to take a look at that. I'll put that in the comment section as well. Finally, probably the last thing I would want you guys to be prepared for is when you're working with the smithy, be sure to use the wish list. Because the wish list will help you keep track of what items and, uh, uh, you know, armor, charms, whatever it is you're working on. Fill that wish list up with the things you need to work on so that you can focus on it while you're fighting monsters. And as you're playing through the story mode, you'll want to kind of rush to the end of the story mode and defeat the last boss. The reason for that is really simple. And this is what I was getting to when I was talking about weapon progression. The boss, he drops a uh, materials that allow you to craft basically the best weapons for you to be using until you reach about level 70 master rank. At level 70 master rank, you gain access to a few new fights that you didn't have access to before, and then maybe those become your best weapons at that point. It's not true for all weapon classes, but for a lot of weapon classes, it's true. Okay, so you'll want to rush to the end of the story, defeat the, the boss, pick up your version of that boss's weapon, and then you'll want to grind to master rank 70. So I've given you kind of a roadmap on what you should be focusing on while you're playing Monster Hunter Iceborne. Alright, and that's the end of the video. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.